Taking off even more parts, hopefully installing some new parts, finally getting around to at least some of the painting, and a whole lot more. We got a lot going on, so let's go. In the last episode, we pretty much wrapped up the entire modernization of the front end. We took an 07 Gixxer 750 front end and crafted it onto this much older 1982 Yamaha Virago chassis. One of the important steps in cafe racerizing your vintage motorcycle is installing some much more modern suspension components and since we already took care of the front end, now it's time to turn our attention to the rear end. In order to install all the shiny new parts we have to remove the very tired and old ones so let me just take care of that very quickly And here is the new part we're replacing that old tired giant shock with. This is two decades newer technology. This is an 03 to 09 Yamaha R6 street bike rear shock. You can use quite a few different shocks for this application and they will fit on this motorcycle of course with modifications but I went with this one because it looks really cool. It's very cheap and other people have done it so I know at least it will work. Of course as with almost everything on this project it's not going to just drop right in and fit because this is off of a newer street bike which has a much shorter suspension travel as compared to this much older longer cruiser style bike so we're going to have to modify this in a way to lengthen it quite a bit. I do have quite a few ideas on how I'm going to tackle this adaptation. I watched a few other people and how they did it. I do have my own idea but I am waiting on some parts so in the meantime I have other things that I need to do like remove both of the wheels and tires. I will say that I was having a hell of a time trying to get this rear wheel off of this frame. I've never done it before. I watched a few YouTube videos and tutorials on how to do it. it seemed very simple. You just take the shaft off and out comes the wheel and that's all you have to do. But maybe you guys can see why I was having such a struggle. Any guesses on what it was that was giving me such a headache trying to get this rear wheel off. As you can see, there is absolutely no way that I can get this wheel out from this subframe the way that they showed it in all the videos. And the reason for that is, drum roll please, this wheel is not made for this specific chassis, this frame. It, even though it is a Virago wheel, it is from a newer version of this bike. And because of that, it is much wider. And in order to take it off, you can't just slide it out. It is much harder. You have to actually take apart the rear shaft drive hub. And once you do that, then you can get enough clearance to take the wheel out. But of course, I didn't know this at the time because I just assumed Assume that the wheels were the ones that came with the spike but that wasn't the case so all the videos I had seen of people just easily sliding theirs out with just taking out the axle shaft that wasn't going to work with the wheels that I have. And even though it is a pain to get the rear wheel off in comparison to the one that came with it, I am glad that it has this modification already because this rear wheel not only looks cooler, but it is quite a bit wider and that's why you can't get it out so easily, but it allows you to run a much wider tire, which is really cool and it adds to the cafe racer look. So once I figured out that conundrum, it was smooth sailing and now I know how to take off and put on the rear wheels which is an important thing especially if you want to get new tires on your bike. Now that I've found a way to remove the wheels, let's get back on to the rear shock problem. And a lot of people have found ways to kind of reuse the bushings that are already in the R6 shock, but I'm kind of starting with my own bushing setup. So I got to remove the old ones. 
And now it's time for some cardboard aided design. I need to pretty much figure out how long I need to make an extending bracket because if I make it too long, it's not gonna fit. And if I don't make it long enough, then it's not gonna fit. So with the aid of some cardboard, I'm going to come out with a template that is going to allow me to create something that will make this shock longer. There are a few bracket designs that are already out there. There's one by Distil Moto, and it's a very nice fully billet aluminum piece that's completely CNC milled. It's very awesome, but it also costs $200, and then you need the bushings that are another 50 bucks, so it's pretty pricey. There's a channel called Two Car Garage, and he's making a similar Virago Cafe Racer, and I'm kind of borrowing his design, although I am trying to improve upon it or make it a little bit stronger stronger in ways that I think is better, although his design is much simpler and easier to make, so I think if I was going to recommend it, I would say just go with his design. If you have more money than you have time, just go with the fancy aluminum one, but if you want to save a few bucks and make something on your own, then you can do it for cheaper. I will show you one way in the next video. Let's take a pit stop and see where we're at so far. This is the most stripped down this bike probably has ever been since it was originally built in the factory, and I think it looks really cool. There's a reason why so many of these old Viragos are turned into cafe racers, because this chassis design is very cool with the floating engine. Everything looks very naked and stripped down. It just looks awesome in my opinion. Okay, since I'm waiting on some parts for mounting the rear shock, I can't really progress further on that. And the next course of action is to mount the tires. But before I do that, I also want to paint the wheels because it's going to look a lot better when I can paint them without any tires on them. I'm trying my best to attack this project in the most efficient way possible because there is definitely an order of operations and I'm trying my best not to have to backtrack and then either install and remove a bunch of parts over and over again even though I'm gonna have to completely tear down the bike for when I paint everything but hopefully I only have to do that one time. There's a reason why I'm trying to get down the suspension front and rear first and then getting the wheels and tires second because this is the foundation that the rest of all of the angles and the things that make a bike look nice or not nice is going to be off of the main kind of stance of the frame. And in order to do that, I need all of my suspension components on there. And I also need the tires that I'm going to be using. I will get more into the overall design of this project in a later episode, but for now I'm just building the foundation and honestly these aren't really the exciting or fun parts of the build. This is kind of just taking care of business. These are the absolute necessary things I need to do before I can start doing the funner stuff. I really didn't think I'd be painting anything at this early in the project, but to me it just makes more sense because I can paint all the way inside of the rim and get a very nice paint job as opposed to trying to lay down some paint with a tire already on the wheel. Because of these order of operations, I was kind of forced to do some painting and pick out colors way before I was kind of ready to do so. I don't have the full finalized idea of how this bike is going to look already in my head. I just have some rough ideas and I'm kind of making it up as I go, but this forced me to kind of take the first steps in how the bike is actually going to look. I knew I wanted to give these wheels an interesting color and I had to choose between light or dark. Did I want to go with a darker bronze or did I want to go with a lighter type silvery gray? There are so many Cafe Racer builds with dark bronze wheels already and that's because they look really good and I was drawn to doing that but I decided even though I am very into dark things, I like black a lot, I like using very dark grays, but I thought for this build, because I always do that, I want to try something a little different. I went with the antique pewter instead of the dark bronze because I felt like this was going to give me a more monochromatic kind of style. The bronze definitely lends itself to more like gold forks and I have black forks so I just wanted to kind of get away from the tinge of color that had to do with the bronze and this is going to give me a much more medium 
kind of gray to work with and therefore it's not going to be coloring it anything it's just going to be much more monochromatic i honestly thought this color was going to be quite a bit darker these look very silver kind of in the sun but this color is very strange because if it's in the shadows it looks very dark gray but if it's in the sun it looks bright silver which i also kind of like that there's quite a bit of dynamic stuff happening there it's not just one flat solid color it has different properties depending on how the sun is hitting it and I think that's pretty cool it looks interesting to me I am not a professional painter or a professional anything by any means so these paint jobs are not going to be like showroom quality but I don't really care because I am building this bike to ride it and these are going to get rock chips and all kinds of other stuff so the paint doesn't have to be flawless with all that being said I was completely blown away with how well of a paint job this came out just from some rattle cans. It probably has a lot to do with this somewhat textured finish because depending on how the light hits it some parts look matte some parts look satin and other parts look very glossy and metallic so you get like this wide range of different textures and tones and I think it just makes these wheels look so much better than if I had just done a regular flat color. They are quite a bit lighter than I was expecting or even maybe hoping but I'm trying to push myself out of my normal comfort zones and do something at least a little different with this build and not straying so much towards all the very dark muted colors but I think these came out exceptionally well for what they are and I was really happy with how everything was looking at this point. And don't worry I'll tell you all about these massive giant meaty tires. These are Dunlop D404 tires front and rear and the sizes for the front are 120-90-17 for the fronts and 150-90-15 for the rears. Because my rear shock mount parts are taking forever to get here, I'm throwing on the old rear shock again because we need to move on and utilize this time to set up the angles. Now that I have the tires I'm going to be using, you can see now that I've matched the bottom of the tires spacing and the bike actually sits on its own suspension and because of that we can now move on to setting the lines for the tank as well as the rear seat slash subframe. To me this is the most critical point of the build because it is going to determine how your motorcycle eventually looks. I have the tires I'm going to be running, I have the suspension minus the shock but that shouldn't make too big of a difference. Now I can start setting the lines for how the tank is going to sit as well as the rear seat and to me these two lines are going to determine how your bike actually looks. Is it going to have a downward slope and look very aggressive kind of like a puma jumping through the air? Is it going to have the tank and the seat kind of lower in the back so it's more of like a rounded shape that goes from front to back? There are so many different lines that you can take and they all make a humongous difference in how your bike eventually looks. I haven't even really talked to you guys about about how I'm going to be setting this up and how I want it to look but I will get into that in the next episode because we're finally at that point where we can start fabricating. To me this point marks the most exciting part of the build and it's only going to get better from here. This is where all the fabrication, all the creation starts happening and I am very happy to show you guys that in future episodes. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.